Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from the county or the country. In case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, between Rigabi Gashagwa and Maina Jenga, who is going to have his way? As far as Mount Kenya youths are concerned. Because over the weekend, Riyadi Gashagwa issued a stern warning to Mungiki. And you cannot talk about Mungiki without making reference to Maina Jenga. Allow me guys to take you back to early this year. Around March, if I'm not wrong, at the peak of Azimio demonstrations, a group of youths raided the private farm of the former president Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. They took away ships, they subdivided the farm, basically they took control of that particular farm. And that issue caused a major political storm in the Republic of Kenya. So far, nobody knows who those youths were, despite the fact that we have a government in place. But fingers were pointed to three main individuals. Moses Korea, who actually tweeted about that raid a night earlier. Kimani Hishungwa, who spoke about the raid. And, and Riyadi Gashagwa, who was in charge. Because on that particular day, William Ruto was out of the republic. And in fact, Kimani Hishungwa made those threats in the presence of Riyadi Gashagwa. La muisho. yangu aliyekuwa rais wetu kama unataka kuheshimiwa heshimu wengine heshimu mali ya watu wengine usipo heshimu mali ya watu wengine sisi wa Kenya wa hapa Mount Kenya tuko na maswali mingi ya zile mashamba kubwa kubwa mumejishikia tukianzia na hapo Thika Road Nairobi hapo Ruiru kabla hatujaenda Taita Taveta kabla hatujaenda na kuru mali ya mkenya ikivamiwa hata hizo mashamba zenyu tutazivamia na wenye hawana mashamba wapate mashamba Kenya hii musifikiri ati wananchi wa kawaida ndio watapoteza mali even you you will pay a price if you continue to instigate violence and bloodshed in this country and that is my message to none other than uhuru kenyatta the sponsor sole sponsor singular financier of Azimio and the machinery that is Raila Odinga. Kwa hayo mengi pole mweshimuwa naibu wa rais ni mwalike kiongozi wa walio wengi kwa nyumu. But after that raid, Uhuru Kenyatta and the family never spoke about it. But I knew from that moment that Mungiki was going to be a major factor in Mount Kenya politics moving forward. And because you cannot talk about Mungiki without their leader, Maina Jenga, I did a video on this particular channel that most of you guys disagreed with. That Maina Njenga was going to be a major political player as far as the 2027 politics was concerned. As fate would have it, Maina Njenga then started emerging. He started moving from one place to another. And his movements started causing serious political shockwaves in Mount Kenya. It reached a point where Maina Njenga would be the only leader who would be allowed to speak whenever Kenya Kwanza leaders were in attendance. But over the weekend, something happened that I want us to analyze in this particular video. Riyadi Gashagwa issued a strong warning to Mungiki. And for me, that warning is not to Mungiki. The warning is basically to one man, Maina Njenga. So I want you guys to listen to Riyadi Gashagwa before we proceed. Mimi nataka kuambia kina mama usikue na wasiwasi. Hiyo kikundi hatuwezi kubali kuja kusubua mama. Wameanza kurudi kusubua watu ya biashara. Ati saa hii ati kuwa mfanyi biashara ati lazima uandike wakulinde biashara yako usihangaishwe nao vijana. Na mimi nimemwambia kaunti commander. Ako hapa kaunti commander. Sinikuambia 
Hiyo maneno yatutaki bana. Wewe ulinde watu. Kwa nini watu walidwa na hiyo vijana? Protect people's businesses. This is a country of the rule of law. Kwa nini mwenye supermarket aende kutafuta vijana atiwalide duka yake asihangaishwe na vijana wa hiyo kundi haramu? Kwa nini waende stage waanze kuchukua pesa watu ya matatu na wewe iko? Can you make sure please that people are able to do their work without disturbance from those young men and you follow the law and protect the people because that is your work. Nasikia commander? Please sit down. Katibu wa Dwaito. Now if you paid very close attention to Rigathi Gashagwa statement, I think it must have been in a church service. If you watch that video long enough, there's even a point where he he stood someone who I think Thuwa uh, Madenge who has been uh, walking around with the minor Jenga and he actually warned him against walking with minor Jenga. So if you paid close attention to the speech, you'll realize that the tone and the body language of Rigadi Gashagwa, you could tell from the body language of Rigadi Gashagwa that the deal in him actually came out very strongly. So I want us to do a critical analysis about that speech. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. Now, there is always this issue of Mount Kenya youths. That at some point, they are hustlers. And at some point, they are mungiki. So, the political class have always failed to draw a line between the mungiki and the hustlers. The truth of the matter is that Maina Jenga is currently creating serious political shockwaves in Mount Kenya. The other day, you saw a group of leaders, women leaders, from the mountain issuing a statement against Mungiki. But one man, the cabinet secretary for, uh, is it now? No, it's no longer the minister cabinet secretary for trade, for performance, for performance or something. Moses Korea actually challenged those women leaders to leave Mungiki alone. And I read a tweet, a tweet really or a Facebook post by a gentleman called Wahome Thuku. Let me just get you that post by Wahome Thuku. This is what Wahome Thuku posted during that particular time. The date is actually on 29th of November. This is what he posted about those women in peace press statement. Huh? That those Mount Kenya women in peace were paid to make allegations that Mungiki is back in the region. The money was given out during a recent event in Muranga where one man, the sponsor, danced with all of them. If you were to ask them for details, they wouldn't even know what to say. The best medicine for them is for the young men in Mount Kenya to unite and send them home in 2027. All of them. Ubaya, you have memories of Njiri. In the meantime, don't allow them to address you. How do, you, how do they address Mungiki followers? If they were wise, they would have claimed that someone is trying to revive Mungiki. Then add that youth in Mount Kenya will not be induced to join the sect. That way, they would have eaten the K-Pins money, Kingpin's money, and still escape with their face untainted. So basically what Wahome Thuku was alleging on this particular post was that there is the women were actually sponsored to come up with a narrative that Mungiki is back. So according to this post, Mungiki is not back. Maina Jenga has always stated similarly that Mungiki is long gone. Mungiki is not there. It's a foundation or it's a, it's a sect that he formed but Mungiki is not there. But why do you think Riyadi Gashagwa is keen on dealing with Mungiki? Number one, in my view, 
it's part of Kenya Kwanza strategy to ban Maina Njenga's event. Maina Njenga announced to the country that on 31st day of December 2023, he was going to hold a major political event or a major political rally somewhere in Nyeri. Nyeri is the home county of Rigedi Gashagwa. So he announced that he was going to hold a major political rally in Nyeri. And that, that rally was going to bring all Mount Kenya leaders. In fact, he's even been using the name of Uru Muge Kenyatta to attract people to that particular event. Although Uhuru Kenyatta has always denied through his people that he is part of that particular meeting. But for me, if you ask me, that meeting is what is causing serious political panic in Kenya Kwanza. So all these things you are hearing, ordering the regional commissioners, the county commissioners to deal with Mungiki is purely part of the strategy to ban that group. So that tomorrow this group will go and seek for permission to hold their meeting. They'll be denied on the account that they are Mugiki. So for me, that is the main reason why Riyadi Gashagwa is coming out openly to announce to the country that they are going to crush Mugiki. Number two, it is also part of Kenya Kwanza propaganda campaigns against Maina Njenga. Maina Njenga is now the face of the Kikuyu new leadership. That is the fact. Because he's the only one who seems to understand what the ordinary Kikuyu young man and young men and women down there are saying. And he's saying them publicly. He's been receiving a lot of uh, support from those youths. So the truth is, by claiming that Nungwiki is back, you instill something in, uh, in the Kikuyu nation. There's normally the fear factor. I think Mungiki did so many bad things to the Kikuyu nation to an extent that they don't really want to hear anything to do with it. But they also are in a situation where they don't know the meaning of Mungiki and the youths. Because when do these youths turn to Mungiki and at what stage do they turn to hustlers? So they want to give Maina Njenga a bad name. Associate him with with uh, with uh, Mungiki, then the ordinary people down there will feel scared, and that's how they'll thwart that is activities. Number three, there has always been this idea of trying to link Uhuru Muge Kenyatta to Mungiki and to Maina Njenga. As a matter of fact, when Maina Njenga started these political activities, his movements across the mountain. People like Kimani Ishungwa were very categorical that he was getting support from Uhuru Kenyatta. As a matter of fact, when Maina Njenga was once arrested, the claim was <clears throat> he had been given some money to distribute. You remember when uh, Pauline Joregi was also arrested, they wanted to establish a link between Uhuru Kenyatta, Pauline Joroge, and <clears throat> Maina Njenga. But they did not find any. So the truth is, they want to try and link Mungiki to Uhuru Kenyatta. Because so far Uhuru Kenyatta has maintained his silence. And because Uhuru Kenyatta has maintained his silence, they, I mean, they've talked about Uhuru Kenyatta to an extent that even their own members of parliament are now tired. Number four, the strategy is to scare Mount Kenya from associating with my Nigeria. I think that can also fall under my second point, which was propaganda. The truth is, Mungiki is feared. So if you tell the mountain that, you know, these guys are now asking for people to pay matatu, you know, if you want to build, you have to pay, then you instill fear. And lastly, it is also a wider scheme by Kenya Kwanza to tame the growing rebellion against Kenya Kwanza government in the mountain. The truth of the matter is that Kenya Kwanza made a lot of promises to the people of the Republic of Kenya, including the mountain. But the mountain, the fact, because of the fact that they voted for, for them overwhelmingly, and because of the fact that they were businessmen, they had hoped that Kenya Kwanza was going to solve most of their problems, which were actually, they were made to believe, were on only two people, Uhuru and Raila. 
But their problems are compounding, compounding each and every single day. So majority of the youthful people from the mountain are actually against Kenya Kwanza and they're now rebelling. So how do you tame them? You give them a name Mugiki. So that tomorrow, if they want to go and uh, say, for example, demonstrate against Kenya Kwanza government, you'll say it's Mungiki and you get a good opportunity to deal with them. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye for now and may you have a good day.